Hello, my name is Thomas Lynch, CEO of Insight TV, television out of the box. We want to thank you for joining us today. The programming that you're about to view was produced by one of our partner production companies. We are excited about bringing you the best in North Carolina programming. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to call us. Our number is 252-714-8249. You can also write us by email. Our email address is info at insight-tv.net. Again, we're excited to bring you this programming and we thank you for watching us the years that we've been on. Remember, your Insight TV starts now. Hello and praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Donald Crooms. I'm your host with Empowerment Today. And I'm your co-host, Tia Crooms. We pastor Faith Tabernacle of Praise on the Crystal Coast in Beaufort, North Carolina. We also oversee Tabernacle of Praise International Ministries with churches in North Carolina, Virginia, Alabama, and Liberia, Africa. We thank you for tuning in with us today. And today our host is, our guest is rather, Tracy Monk. Today we're going to be talking about financial accountability and how it works in the kingdom of God and what it is that God wants us to do as far as with monies that he gives us and how we are to be stewards over those incomes. Welcome Tracy. Yeah, thank you. Praise the Lord. Pastor, um, Bishop Donald and First Lady Tia, thank you for having me in here and also the Faith Time Michael family, uh, family. Thank you all for having me. We're glad awesome. to have you. Uh, Tracy, Sometimes in, in pastoring, I see in, in the, the church's offerings and tithes and offerings, we see fluctuations of it going up and down, and particularly in the winter months. And I often wonder with people making the same income, why is it that we run into these things? And is it anything that we can do in ministry with uh, helping people to better manage their monies that God gives them? And our first question I want to ask you is, uh, were there any events that led you into financial services? That's a good question. Well, I, I, it started somewhere back in about 1992. And it all started because I was actually look, searching for um, help for my own family. Yeah. And um, I had another child that just came in. And I had just learned about, I just heard about investing. I really didn't understand it. And I went and asked somebody for some help. And they, instead of helping me with, investing to help me out with some more different things called insurance and stuff like that. And after a while, I came to understand, probably about four months later, somebody else came and sat down and talked with me mm -hmm. and said, listen, man, this is what you need to be doing. And when he spoke to me about these things, I said, wow. I said, that's interesting. I said, this is what I was looking for. So at that point there, he said, well, listen, Tracy, he showed me, put me in a better program, helped me save a lot more money and start investing money. So then I was able to, I mean, I was able to max out on all kinds of things, you know, at work with my deferred comp and stuff like that. And behind that, I started talking to other people that I knew about the same thing I had, that I had learned. And then the same person had talked to me and said, yo, Tracy, listen, you need to come out there and help us with this business because we need some representatives. And I'm like, well, you know, I really wasn't interested at that point because I was just giving out the information for free because I really wasn't interested. But I, it, came, it came a point where I started thinking about what I really wanted to do as a child. And I always had this dream of being able to have my own office. <laughs> Growing up in New York, the office actually had the, you know, from floor to ceiling um, um, glass. And I'm looking out the side of Manhattan. Oh, so you're not a country boy from New York? Nah, I'm, I'm from New York. I, I'm a country boy at heart, though. I'm, I was here every summer. But with that, I started, I said, okay, well, listen, this might be an opportunity for business. And then I actually started realizing that how much money I could make by helping people. Mm -hmm. and that's always been one of my things. I did 20 years in uh, the police department, and I did that because I loved helping people. I was yes. always an underdog type person helping out the underdog. And our communities, unfortunately, and that's middle to low income communities, whether it be mm -hmm. black or white, Hispanic, 
they're not giving the information about financial services. And that was my whole goal, to start giving that information. So that was my start right there. Wow. Well, you know, Tracy, it sounds like you definitely have a passion for what you do. Absolutely. What types of financial services do you currently provide? Well, and each individual is different. So that's why we like to sit down and, we, and the first course of action is to try and sit down and put a plan together. Because it could be somebody that's uh, 20 years old, not married yet, with no children, mm -hmm. maybe in college or getting ready again. So we put a program together with them, starting out with their goals and dreams, what they want to achieve. Um, if they're married already, then we start talking about some other things. But everything starts on a process of being able to help people start um, being accountable for their money. That's really what it yeah. comes down to. You know, we as a, as a community, we also need to start talking to our children earlier about saving money. You know, we, we, we do it lightly, but we don't really pay attention to really what we're doing about, listen, we need to instill these little principles as far as saving a certain amount of money that they have. Talk about investing with them. Talk about staying out of debt that, that, that our whole society is, is, is feeds on right now. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I would say we start out helping people with insurances, putting those things in place, showing them how to get out of debt. Then talk about showing how to invest because you can't invest no money if you're too far in debt. Mm -hmm. So we need to put a program to get you out of debt and then we can get you investing. You know, I, I think it, it has to start young. Yes. So we don't understand money. And I think um, in our society now, it's kind of like buying every new thing that comes out, yes. every, every new phone, every new toy, every new technological whatever. Yes. That's what we go after. And we do it sometimes to our hurt. Yes. And then we're broke. Yes. And, and we're talking from the spiritual point of view, which has repercussions in the kingdom, because then when you need to expand and do things in the kingdom, the people who attend don't have the money, have the money. because they spent it on things that um, say it has been commercialized. And uh, I think early on, we don't, we don't understand. I remember as a child, a, a couple of relatives would say to me, save some money. So you need to save some money, put something away. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what it was. But I, they opened me a bank account and I put some in, draw some out, put some in, draw <laughs> some out. And so, you know, I just didn't get the, the part. And had I taken that wisdom, I would be in a better position today. Yes. But I didn't understand it because um, when I was coming along in church, what we heard was um, money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Right. Studying later, I found out the love of it right. is the root of all evil. Right. Because wherever our treasure, our treasure is, that's where our heart is also. Mm -hmm. And you can have money in your heart and not be in it. It can be a vehicle right. to be a blessing. That's right. And that's what God wants to get to us, is how to be a blessing to other people. And that's why we have you on today, because you're one of the key people, I believe, that God's going to use to help us, the church, and uh, the kingdom of God to get in a better place financially so that we are not the uh, borrowers, but the lenders. That's right. And I, I feel, and, I, and that's my passion, which is what you're saying. And, and I, I really believe that's going to happen because I'm not saying nothing that's not in the book. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in there. Everything I'm saying is, is there. It's not like I'm making up something new. I think Tracy Monk didn't make up this, this uh, stay out of debt, uh, invest for the future. The scripture that talks about these things mm -hmm. and we have to get back to that um you know sometimes we look at our our grandparents and great-grandparents and we say sometimes especially as young as oh they weren't that smart they didn't have that much education but what they did understand was staying out of debt that's right see now because they understood that and they weren't allowed to get into that kind of debt they were able to put in put themselves in a position where they could buy some land that they that's own right. Yeah. Have property that they own, have retirement that most of us, if we don't get back on and understanding those basic principles, will not have. Mm -hmm. So right. we have to get back to those principles. And like I said, when you just mentioned, stay within the book and, and getting out of debt, investing for the future and protecting the family. But suppose, you know, in marriages, there's usually an overbearing, bearing personality, mm -hmm. whether it's the man or the woman. Mm -hmm. And suppose the overbearing person is the spender. You know, what do you all think can happen when it's one who's always spending and the other is always trying to save, or the other one has already spent the, 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 the saver's money before they ever get it? You, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Well, see, that's when they have to come to you for counseling. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, that's really one of the things where we have to, and that's why we have to keep checking our egos, because that's really what happens. The person who doesn't want to change, they know they're doing wrong. 
-hmm. So they have to want, you know, somebody have to help them check their ego and be like, listen, this is not for the betterment of the family. Because if you can keep the focus of the family, mm. That's right. then a lot of times you can make those adjustments and be like, okay, let me build back on this here. You know, I've had some things I wanted to get. My wife, Maria, oh, come on now, Tracy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And, you know, then I won't do it. You know, I just, and I just, be, I just bought an iPad not that, not that long ago. Now I, I was connected with business. Right. But, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that, you know, when you when you got to really focus on things that you need. But you took care of the need. Oh, yeah. So that was exactly. a want. So, exactly. you know, then you, exactly. then you, right. those like the scripture says, when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. all other things will be added. That's the other things that are added. Right. Those are the other things that are added. I and I think the messages we're trying to send out is um, sometimes we in church, we want to shout people, shout them, praise them, you know, and do all of that and then tell them. You know, run up and down the aisle, and when you finish, you're going to be a millionaire next year. Mm -hmm. That is not how God gives us financial accountability. Yes. He's right. not going, he can miraculously, but he's not going to do it. If you're not going to listen, mm -hmm. go into Equifax, TransUnion, mm -hmm. and Experian, and change your credit score so you can go out and get more stuff. Mm -hmm. He's going to teach you how to, you lord over your own finances, right. not let the devil steal from you. That's right. The devil steals from us by making us have lust of the eyes, mm -hmm. the pride of life. Yeah. And that is when we want certain things because you drive a, a Cadillac, I'm going to drive one. When I really, I have a, um, a Corolla budget. budget. Right. Then I should be driving my Corolla and happy in it right. while you drive yours. And when I really need to go to New York, then I get in your Cadillac and go to New York. Right. And then that's what we call having all things in common right. as the church and the early church did in the Acts of the Apostles. This has truly been an awesome discussion, but right now we want to take a praise break and bring on Minister Daquilla Midget, who's going to bless us with a song. Oh, yes. And I do, we do really love the Lord. 
So Tracy, back to you again. In 2012, how important is financial accountability, would you say? You say 2012, and see, and, and I understand your question, but we, we have to really understand it's always been important. Mm -hmm. It's always been. Now with, this, with the changing of society and everything, it, now we're paying a lot more attention to it, but we're paying attention to it because we didn't pay attention to it before. Right. Um, those that were, they still riding around and like, like nothing happened. It's like, cause they all smooth. You know, those of us that weren't accountable as we should have been, now we're looking at understanding 2012. Now, 2000, now to answer the question 2012, we have a few changes that we really need to pay attention to. And I mentioned about that debt. Now, if you heard me, I meant to mention debt a couple of times. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you was in debt and put like this here, interest rates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interest rates are important because if you're paying 12 to 13 to 15 percent in interest to a credit card, but you're only going to earn eight or nine percent in a, any type of investment, having all your money in debt is destroying your, your finances. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about it, that's why accountability is so because you got to be accountable to every, everywhere your money is going. You have to be paying real close attention to where your money is going. Because sometimes you can look, a person can sit down and look at their credit card statement at the end of the year and say, wow, okay, well, I was paying my credit card bill on time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, they look and say, wow, I add it all up. Mm -hmm. I, paid, I paid an extra $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 just in interest. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then you ask the same question, well, listen, Okay, okay. Wow, that's a lot of money you spend in interest. Well, how much money did you make in your investments? Well, I don't have no investments. Well, then that means you just threw away another mm. $2,500. And you can only start getting focused on that if you start saying, listen, I got to stop being accountable to everything I'm going. And it's a whole lot of different ways to do it. That's why it's so important for the sit down, put a plan, find out the complete finances, and then really start tackling those mm -hmm, issues. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it, it seems to me that society has pretty much set it up that oh, yes. you mm -hmm. that you get into debt. Oh yes. You know, if you were uh, you know, a new couple just getting married, you know, say you were say you were blessed with a house, you were able to get a house. You moved from didn't go to an apartment, went straight to a house. It takes everything you have to get into the house. Mm -hmm particularly a new couple, and they're blessed if family can help them out. Mm -hmm. And then you're in a house with nothing in it. So it's hard for them to get furniture. They're going to charge you. You know, she and I got some stuff from, I love the place, a uh, uh, store, I won't call it on, on, on screen. But we, we, we went to this place, and the interest rate is just crazy. So what we've been trying to do, every time we get a, like a, extra amount of money, put it on that card instead of paying that regular payment. Right. Throw it on that card so we can avoid the interest because we might pay $200 and 80 of it went on interest. That's right. That's and, right. and we're sitting there looking, we just giving them $80, Give them away. you know, and so it, over a period, we took the three years, we would spend uh, more than $2,500 just in interest for something that should have cost $4,000. Well, Bishop, look at this one here. I have a little fly that I like to use, and it says, when does, a four, when does a cup of coffee cost you $40? And then we would sit here, we would say, I would never buy a $40 cup of coffee, right? Mm -hmm. But it. then when somebody goes, swipes Swipe it. Swipe the card. Yes. And you mess around in your, not, not even talking about not paying that one. Watch this here. This is the other big thing. Oh, now you went over your limit. They charge you <laughs> $35 to $40 overdraft fee. You just bought a $40 cup of coffee because we're not being accountable. That's yeah. the thing, that's what yeah. it goes back. Yeah. We have to become accountable to everything we're going to do. If we, if, we get, if we get that going, accountable to our family, accountable. Hey, and, they, and as you know, this, it doesn't just talk about the finance. All this stuff is about life. So when you couple all that stuff in with life, it's accountability to your wife, your husband, your children, every, even your job. You know, people say you got to get accountable to your job. You, yes, you got a place yes, that's paying yes, you, giving yes. you a salary. Be accountable to it. Yes. You yes. know, I talk to people all the time, you know, because we, we're, we're in the business of, of, of training people, having them come work with us. I said, listen, respect the job you're at. Yeah. Because that's yeah. paying your wages. Yeah. I said, you, you, you don't want to mess around and mess that up. And then that also transitions to everything else you're doing. And, you know, I'm sure our viewers want to know. So if they're in this situation, 
where they're in a lot of debt, you know, they're trying hard to pay some things off, they're trying to set some goals, um, but it's just real frustrating. What do you do to start saving? What are some key points that you can give these viewers who might be in the situation? The first thing is that you have to sit down, pull out your, uh, look at your income coming in, mm -hmm. look at your paychecks coming in, and look how much is going out. You have to truly start saying, listen, let me find out how much money I'm actually spending. Mm. You know, and I was a victim of it too, because I, you know, it's easy for me to go to the car, I'm gassing up, hit the thing, boom, fill up the tank and keep moving. And with me and three boys riding around, so and <laughs> I, my, I look at the car, it goes back, it's empty again, I'm hitting, I'm hitting. And it was the time, like I said, when I, when I had to refocus my own self, which was about two years ago, when, the, when gas went up to $4, it was when yes. gas went up to $4. Yes. Yes. And I had, to, I had to sit back and I said, well, listen, let me look at what's happening. Because at that point, more money was going out in expenses than, than, than usual. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking back and I said, wait a minute. So I, I tallied it up and it was months where I was spending over $600 just in gasoline. Yes. Wow. I said, wow. Nah, I wasn't paying attention to it because I was swiping the card. So first thing I would tell people to do is, listen, put the card down. Mm. <laughs> put cash in your pocket. And when you start putting cash in your pocket and you pulling that cash out, it's certain things you stop getting. That's true. <laughs> it's certain things. You're like, you know. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that, that, that $60, i get me to the end of the week. Mm. Uh, no, nah, I'll see what happened at the end of the week. And by the end of the week, you'll be like, listen, I didn't, I didn't get it, so I'm all right. Right. And that's what happens. And, and it's about looking at where your money's going. It, it, it starts there. You have to start there. Whether or not you do it yourself, whether or not you have somebody help you do it. And that's one of the main things I like to try and do, sit down and help people do those things. So let me ask you this, you know, you know sometimes people uh, have the misconception that you need a, 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 a lot of money to invest. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know with some of the, the programs you have or whatever, what is the minimum that the average person who is, say, making $10 an hour, uh, and they say, I don't have anything left. What is the minimum that you could start a financial portfolio and start investing with? The minimum we can help somebody start investing with is $50 a month. Say that again. 50, five, zero a month. That's a dollar sixty something a, a day, day, something like that. Mm -hmm. $50 a month. And we can get you to start investing, saving, putting $50 to the side, we can get you invested into a mutual fund. But see, on, on top of that, see, and, and I, I want to say this here because I really try and help people understand this here. We start talking about trying to get out of debt and breaking down. And some people really have to understand that all of that is not going to matter if you don't make more money. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's one of them things where, listen, I need to either get more hours at work over time. I need to get a second job, second career. I may need to do something else because if I'm... $30,000 in debt, and I can only cover 10, I have to find a way to make it up. And that's when we have to suck it up sometime like our grandparents did and our parents and went out there and had other jobs, went out there working in fields when they, I well, use down here, yeah. working in fields when they had to. All the things they had to do to make the extra money. That's, and I, I want to throw that at them because I, I have to sit down with people sometime and if, they, if their shortfall is so short that they're not going to be able to make it up with, with the money they have, then we have to find a way to listen. You have to make some more money, overtime at work, or whatever it may be. But as far as the fifty dollars a month, we can help. And and, the, and one of the reasons, and and our time is just going so fast. One of the reasons I, we wanted you to come, because we want to help the people who, who do ministry with us. Okay. We we see lack. Um, we experience lack. We're we're tight sometimes in budgeting. Uh, I do a lot of evangelism and some of the people travel with me and they're spending money out of pocket and you know and so you know we want them to, to see that when they are 30, 35, 40 that age they really have a jump they could really really start saving something mm -hmm. so that when they start hitting 65 and 70 if there is no social security it won't matter. Right. But what I want you to do today is before we leave uh, from the air, I want to say this. I want everyone to know who you are, how they can contact you, and give your information at this time so they'll know how to contact you and start to move on this journey so we can become financially secure so that we can bless the kingdom of God and also enjoy life. Okay, thanks. First of all, my name is Tracy Monk. I'm the oldest boy of Ray and Alice Monk. <laughs> 
both of North Carolina. I had to throw that in there just in case I'm looking <laughs> But um, I have an office in Cove City and, and a miniature office in, 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 in New Bern, North Carolina. Uh, my office number is 910-805-6608. 910-805-6608. And, and if you can't reach me there, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in this here. I love this here. So you, I get people leave my own cell number, 917-559-2458. Repeat that again, 917-559-2458. So those who are listening and looking today, Tracy Monk and Associates, look him up, call him, write him, email him, whatever you want to do to get in touch with him, and he will help you to get on a road of financial success so you can not, be just, not just get a blessing, but be a blessing. And right now we want to pray. Father, I thank you for those who will tune in and listen yes, to Lord. this telecast. I pray, Father, that you will cause them to get a piercing in their spirit, to get a burden, that they will get out of debt, and they will begin to be able to sow more into themselves and the kingdom. Yes, we thank you right now that you are our source, that you are the God of plenty, who's more than enough. Now we thank you that we're getting ready to walk in overflow, that we're going to walk in abundance because we are going to use those principles that you've given us. We thank you now. I rebuke poverty off of your people yes. and I command increase to hit their lives immediately, suddenly. And Father, give us wisdom how to use this increase. And we thank you. And it is in the name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Amen. Once again, we want to give special thanks to our guest, Tracy Monk, yes. for coming to our show today. And thank you again for tuning in to another Empowerment, empowerment today. today. God bless. God bless. Thank you for joining us for another Empowerment Today, where I'm your co-host, First Lady Tia Crooms, and the host, Bishop Donald Crooms. If you're interested in worshiping with us, please join us at Faith Tabernacle of Praise every Sunday, where Sunday school begins at 9.45 a.m., followed by morning worship at 11 a.m. On Tuesday nights, we have Tabernacle Bible Institute at 7.30 p.m., and on Wednesdays, Bible study at 7.30 p.m. You can also visit us on the web at www.topim.org, where you will find church listings in the area. Again, thank you for watching Empowerment Today. Hello, my name is Thomas Lynch, CEO of Insight TV. We want to thank you for watching our programming. If you have any questions about the program you just viewed, please email us at info at insight-tv.net. If you have any questions about our organization, don't hesitate to log on to our website at www.insight-tv.net.